I am reshooting my video on writing equilibrium expressions for 2017, and my goodness, 60 frames per second is such a sexy way to record video. I'm really feeling this. To write an equilibrium expression from a balanced chemical equation, you're going to ignore all of the solids and liquids, put the concentrations of the products on top and reactants on bottom, most teachers will say products over reactants, and the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation will become the exponents in that equilibrium expression. Here, I've already balanced this for us. Six ammonias, eight ozones, be making three N2O5s and nine waters. Now to create the Kc or KEQ for this reaction, products over reactants, coefficients become exponents. Re products uh, include, ooh, that's an ugly marker. Uh, products include N2O5, and it was a gas, so it does not get ignored with a power of three on it because there's a three as a coefficient. The water will get ignored in the equilibrium expression because it is a pure liquid. Now the reason for that has to do with how advanced the chemistry you're dealing with is. In the real world, we don't use concentrations, we use activities, and then they don't get ignored. But for liquids, it's close enough to not make a difference in KEQ. So, here we are. We will need our reactants on the bottom. I have NaOH3 as a reactant with a power of 6. It was a gas, so it gets included. And I have ozone with a power of 8, and it was a gas, so it gets included. These square brackets mean moles per liter. That's concentration or molarity. It needs to get plugged in here if you're calculating a Kc or Keq. And if you're wondering where the C comes from, it's because I'm using moles per liter. Because these were all gases, I could have also created something called Kp. Kp is the exact same thing, except you're going to use the partial pressure of each of those. What amount of pressure in your you know, container or vessel comes from N2O5? Plug that number in to the power of 3. What's the pressure contribution of ammonia in your vessel? to the power of six. What's the pressure contribution of ozone to the power of eight? It looks the same, except these numbers need to be in, oh boy, I can't remember if it's ATMs or bars. Uh, you'll have to look it up or use whatever your teacher wants. I have a feeling uh, people who do metric uh, do this another way. Anyways, Kp is for pressures, Kc is for concentrations, and if your teacher calls it Keq, they're probably looking for this one. Let's do this together a couple more times. Here's a reaction in aqueous solution. One, 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 so all my exponents will be one. The Keq will be products over reactants. My product is H3O+, plus. that will have a power of one. I don't have to write it. My F- minus is also a product, it's Aq, so it gets included, and it has a power of one. HF, is Aq, so it gets included, power of one. H2O is liquid, it gets ignored. Now those of you who have gone far into equilibrium might recognize this as an acid reacting with water. So this is actually called Ka, but your teacher could call it Keq, and it's perfectly fine. Lastly, I have methylamine, breaking bad fans out there, reacting with water to make this. Again, I only include things that are AQ and gas. I ignore solids and liquids. So concentration of CH3, NH3 plus to the power of one. OH minus, again to the power of one. I really should have switched things up here. And concentration of methylamine, which is aqueous according to this chemical reaction, to the power of one. Water ignored again because it's a liquid. Again, solids get ignored as well. All right. Oh, and those of you who do acid-based chemistry recognize this as a base reacting with water, so it's Kb, but your teacher could call it Keq, and it would be perfectly fine because they're all equilibrium expressions. Cool? Cool. Uh, that's it. Welcome to Equilibrium. Good to have you with us, and uh, best of luck.